Hey everybody, welcome back to Art by Galen. My name is Galen Eilenfeld, and welcome back to Creating Comics Start to Finish, which of course is my series aimed to teach you how to create your own comic books from the very beginning stages all the way down to the end stages of getting things printed and published. In this video, we're going to be talking about where to start. First and foremost, before you can create a comic book, you need a story. And before you can have a story or a script, you need a premise or a starting point. I know we're talking about writing today. I do have some artwork going on in the background here for you. This is me working on some of the pages from my own book, Baku Dreamwalkers. Just to give you something to look at while I ramble on about this. <laughs> so what is a premise? A premise, it's a concept, it's a starting point, it's a place, a thing, a character, anything that you can use to start building your story from. It doesn't have to be anything fancy or epic. It just needs to be something that you're genuinely curious about and that you're excited about exploring in your story. It can range from something incredibly mundane to you know something extraordinarily epic or anywhere in between. In this video, I'm gonna give you some different ways to come up with a premise for your comics. Before you even decide what you're gonna write about, make sure it's something that you're passionate about. Probably the biggest piece of advice that I can give you for writing and for drawing your comics is don't make anything that you're not passionate about. If you're working for someone to draw or to write their comics, you may or may not have uh, much of a choice in that. But if you're an indie creator, more than likely you have a lot of creative freedom in the decision-making process. I'm gonna hit you with a hard question. This might be a little tough to hear, but it is, the tr it is the truth when you're talking about the core idea of your comic. Now, I'm not talking about critiquing your art or critiquing, you know, nitpicking things. I'm talking about the core of your idea for your book. If you're not hyped about it, why should anybody else be? As a reminder that your premise is your launching pad for your comic, if you're not hyped up about the premise of your book, why in the world would anybody else be? Now, that may not be something that you want to hear, but it is something that you need to be considerate of. When you put passion into something, it imbues it with something special. You know, you're going to make your best stories by exploring the things that genuinely fascinate and interest you. You know, you yourself and any viewer or reader can almost tell instantly when they're looking through a comic book or it's the same for uh, movies and TV shows as well. Like you can tell when someone put a lot of hard work and passion into something versus somebody who just tried to crank something out. Your passion will come through in the attention to detail. A lack of passion will manifest as work that's been rushed, neglected, details overlooked, or even forgotten. And it happens when people just aren't interested in what they're making. Another benefit of being highly interested in what you're making is it makes you more likely to be motivated to work on it. Another tip for choosing a premise is to write about things that you know, and if you don't know about them, do some research on them. Now this is similar to the previous topic, but this applies more to our knowledge base rather than our interests. For instance, it's probably not a great idea to write about real world cops and lawyers and things like that when you don't have a good understanding of uh, the laws that would pertain to the story and the rules that those people have to follow in the story. Otherwise, it's going to be very difficult for you to make something that readers are going to perceive as believable. It doesn't mean you need to go get a law degree or anything like that. It just means you need to learn enough about the subject in order to reinforce and support what it is that you're writing. Another thing to consider when you're coming up with your premise is who is your audience? Like, do you know who your audience is? A very clear but exaggerated example of not knowing your audience would be uh, let's say your your aim is to write a children's book, but you're writing about a war hero who suffers from severe PTSD and has anxiety and hallucinations of death and destruction. You know, obviously, when you're writing that story, you're not really considering that your audience is intended to be children. Now, maybe there are people out there creative enough to make that work, but you do kind of get the point of what I'm what I'm trying to say here. It can be kind of daunting to try to figure out, okay, who exactly is my target audience? But there are a couple of methods that you can use to help you kind of figure that out a little bit. The easiest one is look at similar books out there compared to the one that you're trying to make. Uh, whatever your premise is, you know, find something that is, you know, similar out there and see what types of people read that book. Now, if you're not entirely sure what your target audience is, uh, so you can't even find something, you know, comparable to, to look up, another way you can do it is by coming up with keywords that represent the story that you're writing or that you want to write. Make a list of these keywords and then use those as subjects 
And if you look them up individually and kind of compare the audiences for those particular subjects, then you can get a better idea of what your target audience is by the way that those things mix and match. For example, here, my book, Baku Dreamwalkers, it's intended for adults who enjoy a dark science fiction and fantasy story in a modern and real world setting. If you're not sure exactly what your target audience is, try to come up with a list of keywords that could be used to sum up the focal points of your story, and then look up the average audience for those subjects. Using my book as an example, some of the keywords for Baku Dreamwalkers, obviously the very first one would be dreams. Um, next would be relationships, because it focuses a lot on the relationship that uh, Penelope has with her roommate Alessa. It also focuses on the relationship that Penelope has with her boyfriend Luke, and uh, some of the trials and tribulations that they go through. Uh, science fiction and fantasy, obviously, is another one, um, because, you know, number one, first and foremost, we are exploring dreams, and, uh, you know, next to that, we've, we've even got a little bit of horror in it as well, because of how many, you know, like, nightmares happen in these dreams. And, um... While I'm showing these books, this is a great time for me to take a moment and thank our sponsor, Comics Wellspring, for supporting this video series and for supporting indie creators the way that they do. If you're not familiar, Comics Wellspring is a printing company that provides comic book printing services for people like you and me who make indie comics. All of my comics that I've ever made have been printed with Comics Wellspring. And um, I've done three issues so far, and between the three issues, I've done 11 different versions of them. That includes like some variant covers and sketch covers even. They have an incredibly low minimum order. You can get your comic ordered at, with as low as an order of 25 copies, uh, which is absolutely amazing. They've got great customer service. They're very supportive. Definitely go check them out if you are looking to print your next indie comic. They also have a service online called CWS Bookstore where you can actually sell physical and digital copies of your comic books. They handle the shipping and everything, and uh, you don't have to worry about any of that. Uh, so definitely thank you again to Comics Wellspring for sponsoring this video. And If you're interested in using Comics Wellspring to get your next indie comic printed, there's a link down below where you can get that started. And I've also got a code here that you can use to get 5% off your order. Some sources of inspiration if you're not quite sure what to write about or what to set as your premise. Starting with what-if questions is a great way to do it. Uh, you know, For instance, with my book, let me refer again to Baku Dreamwalkers. My question was, what if you could go inside other people's dreams? And what if you could manipulate their dreams? And that is what I built my story from. And it follows this girl, Penelope, who has that ability. You know, a more common example is Spider-Man. You know, the premise is, you know, what if a teenager was bitten by a radioactive spider and subsequently developed superpowers. I find that having a notebook or a digital file of some sort with lots of these types of questions can really help to get your mind going with new and interesting ideas. And whether you use them or not is up to you, but it's it, it really does help exercise your creativity. Another method is basing it on your own real life experiences. You know, For instance, you could write about the last time you took a trip or a vacation and change it up, you know, make, make yourself into a different character, change it into someone new that, ha that is having that experience, and, you know, see where it goes. And, you know, like we said, it doesn't have to be something epic either. You could start off by retelling events that led to you being stranded on the side of the highway with your car broken down. An interesting story can start just about anywhere. Read a news article or something like that, and try to make up a story that led to that event. And obviously don't base it on the real world people or the real world events or anything like that, but use it as a source of inspiration. You can go out and interact with people or just get out and do things that you wouldn't ordinarily do, like taking a hike or spending a day at the zoo or even spending a day like at the bowling alley or something like that. Even like people watching, you know, something that I like to do when I'm in public is I, if I see people at a distance that are having a conversation or... Uh, doing something, I try to make up little stories in my head, like, what are they saying to each other back and forth? Or, you know, what is the reason behind what this person is doing? You know, and and I use them as exercises of creativity. Now, with your premise, you know, you may only have a character idea to start off with. And if that's the case, you could start by, you know, playing with ideas, simply dropping your character into different situations and seeing what happens. You may have the details, like who they are, if they've got any abilities or powers or anything like that. 
you know, drop them like that last 30 minutes before getting off of work, what's happening with them or, you know, you know, put them into different situations. It could be something like that. It could be like, maybe they're hanging out at a coffee shop. Maybe they're people watching. What are they thinking about while they people watch? Uh, different things that can help you kind of develop. Uh, and conversely, you might not have any characters yet. You might just have like a setting. Um, and you can do kind of the same exercise for a setting. You know, for instance, like if you if your story is set at a haunted house, right? Like you could have the house itself figured out. And then if you want to learn more about what the house does or how it works, drop a few random like NPC style characters and just start writing. You know, which leads me to the last line of defense for coming up with a premise, and that is to just start writing. Uh, sometimes just opening up and allowing ourselves the permission to be just fully creative and, you know, to let whatever happens happen as far as what we're writing. Um, sometimes that's exactly what we need in order to get those creative ideas flowing. It might be kind of scary to do without any idea of where you're going, but it does actually help. And you may not like the idea, you may not like the result, but what it can do is it can evolve. It can evolve into something that you do enjoy, or it can inspire something else that you may end up loving. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you found it helpful. Let me know if you have any questions or anything about writing or drawing your comics. Uh, I look forward to seeing you in more of my videos about making comics. I want to take another moment and just say thank you to anybody who has supported me in my work by purchasing my comic book, Baku Dreamwalkers. Any of the issues, uh, digital or physical, there are links down below where you can get them as well. Thank you so much for supporting what I do. Also worth noting that all of my comics were printed by Comics Wellspring, uh, our sponsor. I, I myself as a customer has, have always been very happy with them, even long before the sponsorship existed. I hope you have a great day. I'm going to link you to some other videos in the series here. And until next time, keep creating and take care.